Hello and welcome to the Korea Bay Dancing Podcast. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I'm a knitter and network designer based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I'd like to cast on in the not too distant future. And I'm back with a regular podcast episode. I've got so much to show you. I'm very, very excited. Um, a quick upfront apology is that I have the last few bits of my office uh, studio that I'm in right now arriving in the next 30 minutes and I've got a food shop like my weekly groceries arriving <laughs> so it may be a choppy episode but I don't have time this afternoon to film so I'm going to film now and apologies if we're a little bit start stoppy today we'll get into it um I'm in my new studio space I'm on my comfy sofa I think this is where I'm going to try and keep filming it's quite a bright day outside so I think it's working I might eventually have some studio lighting in here we will see, but it's really nice because I'm here, I'm on a comfy sofa and I am surrounded, like this side and this side, by projects and whips to share with you today. And I've got loads to talk about. Um, what do I have? I have a test call, I have new work, works in progress. I've got two finished objects. Yeah, plenty. I feel like I've been doing a lot of knitting. So I'm curious if it comes across as a lot of knitting. It feels like a lot of like involved stuff, a lot of texture. So it might not be as like fast and speedy knitting as I, you know, I don't have made progress even though I've been knitting a lot. We will see. So uh, let's start. First and foremost, what I'm wearing also happens to be what my tester call is today. This is my Staffin sweater, S-T-A-F-F-I-N. Uh, it's a place on Sky and it is a raglan textured sweater in a kind of traditional Gansey style. Um, so I, let me talk you through it. There are these bands of texture. I can show you. Bands of texture. So there is two by two rib and then there is um, diamond brocade and then they are uh, framed, let's say, by Estonian buttons. I know the person who commented and told me that they were Estonian buttons and I've forgotten their name, I'm sorry. Um, but someone did comment and tell me that these are called Estonian buttons. I was looking for... I didn't want to do bobbles, but I wanted the bobble texture and I did a few other things. I tried like pearl stitches and I tried uh, yarn overs and then I came across these and they're just, you just work them on one row and they're neater and they don't, I feel it like with me, my bobbles sometimes are great and sometimes they're not so great. Um, and so this was like a very consistent way of doing it, if that makes sense. So two by two rib, Estonian buttons and diamond brocade and yeah, it's a raglan, it's top down, it's a 16 stitch gauge, so it is a relatively, like, it's not a particularly labour intensive knit, it's a really, really enjoyable knit. Um, I use Rauma Fievel, I have a skein of it here, not the colour I used, it's 100 metres per 50 grams, it's 100% Norwegian wool. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about it. This is colour 400. I don't know. Yeah, this one. Um, this is the beige colour. This is the dark grey colour. I love this yarn. This to me is what I want Lopi to be, but Lopi is too itchy for me. I can't wear Lopi. Um, I just find it a bit too scratchy on my skin. Like I could not wear Lopi like, close to my neck. It's rustic and it's warm, but it doesn't feel itchy in any way whatsoever. I know that Norwegians rave about how amazing Rauma is and I am quickly becoming a convert because I think it's great. Um, a few things about this then. So firstly, there are a couple of changes between the sample and the final pattern. The first is that the neckline on the sample is a bit wider. Um, I just didn't cast on quite enough stitches to start with so I've basically just taken the neckline out a single repeat on the final pattern. So it's not tight on me to be honest. I'm uh, wearing, I blocked my neck, I made quite a conscious effort to block my neckline out and it's perfectly fine now but before blocking it was a bit too tight so the neckline on the sat on the pattern is a tiny touch wider. The Estonian buttons on this uh, have be are just slightly further apart in the final pattern just because it's easier for the pattern repeat if they're every four stitches instead of every five stitches so like I just pop them out one more. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, and <laughs> again, super silly, but the rows, uh, the number of rows of two by two is one fewer on the final pattern than it is on the sample. And that is because along with a sweater, I decided that I would also like to have a sweet 
of patterns in this stitch pattern. So there is a sweater, there is a cardigan, there is a vest and there is a shawl. Um, I'll get into the breakdowns in a second but for the bobbles to be worked on the right side it doesn't matter when it's in the round if this was an odd number but this had to be an even number for me to get bobbles on the right side on the when it's worked flat. So there are a couple of like very minor changes from this to the final pattern um, but I am so pleased with it. This is probably my favourite knit that I've finished recently. I just absolutely love it. Um, I'm trying really hard not to wear it every single day. I really want to but this pattern will not come out until January and it is only October and I don't want to trash this before like I don't know I think this yarn wore very well from what I hear but I just don't want to like wear it to death and then not have it for sample pictures because I want it for sample pictures. <laughs> um, it's called Staffin because um, both Staffa the island and Staffin have this amazing um, what's the word I'm looking for? People who like rocks. My dad is one of these and I forgot what the word is. Geologist. There's like the rocks, the, the geology on those two locations is really interesting. They have these hexagonal columns. It's a little bit, in Staffa, the island, it's very prominent and in Staffin it's like one coast of it and um, I thought these looked like these columns, which I really like. So let's get into the test knit. The test knit test call is available down below. I'm looking for testers for this sweater. I'm also looking for testers for the cardigan version. The cardigan version has not, I don't have a sample. Uh, so super upfront about that. I do have two tech editors. So it, the pattern has been like double checked and I will be casting on and knitting my cardigan sample along with the sample with the sweater. But like if that causes you any stress, don't apply to knit the cardigan basically. Um, I will be knitting up my cardigan in this. I'm really, really excited. Um, the cardigan has a v-neck and a round neck option. So it's a v-neck or a round neck finished with one by one rib, just like the sweater. Uh, the test knit is 11 and a half weeks. It'll start on Monday. Um, so it's just shy of 12 weeks. The test form is down below. I will close it. Um, the goal will be to close it on Sunday evening, but it might be earlier than that if I get an obscene number of applications. As well as for the shawl and the car, sorry, the sweater and the cardigan, um, I'm also looking for testers for the shawl. So this is the shawl version. Now, a little bit uh, unconventional, I guess, is my shawl is blocked so that I can have the final measurements, but I have lots of this yarn and the shawl is gonna have three sizes, a shawlette, which is a small version, a medium size, which is gonna be pretty much a one skein, and then the full size. And this is the size of the shawlette version minus the edging. So it's going to have rubbing on the edge. But I wanted to get my sizing right. Um, but I don't want the smallest version to be in this yarn because I have so much of this yarn. So I should have cast on the smallest version in a different yarn ultimately. But I didn't really think it through. I was excited to knit in this yarn and I just cast it on. So this is the shawl. As you can see, it's the same pattern. It's got, so the ribbing, the raglan detail here is a pearl detail. It has the same on the spine of the shawl and it will be finished by, by one by one rib, similar to the neckline of the shawl. So this is marginally smaller than the shawlette version. My goal is to get this one, well this will come out in November so that it'll be done for gift knitting. It is such a fun quick knit. Um, I feel like if you're, in the, if you're in the trenches of gift knitting you want something fun and I hope that this will meet that requirement. That's why the shawl is going to come out a little bit early. Um, so there's this version, there is a, then a medium version which is basically uh, 30 centimetres more wingspan and then the large version is even more, it uses three skeins of yarn and it's going to be a full size. This will become a large version um, but I didn't want to, I wanted to stop and get this blocked and get this ready so I had all the measurements ready for the small size. <laughs> so the test form below has the sweater, the cardigan, and the shawl. Um, the shawl test knit is a six week test because even the larger size is only three skeins of yarn. The, maybe it's a seven week test. I can't remember the exact dates, but they'll all be in the form below. And the um, sweater version deadline will be in January. I think just after Christmas, probably the first week of January, the test will end. And all the details about yardages and 
sizing and all that is down below. I am wearing a hundred, the 120 centimeter sample size. I got about 20 centimeters of positive ease around this. So it's, I went oversized on this. I don't normally, I usually only go to like between eight and 15 centimeters of ease. This is a bigger sweater. I love it for the sort of style it is. Um, but this does have 20 centimeters of ease. I think it's everything. I feel weird that I jumped straight into test call stuff, but I think I've covered everything. Um, the last piece then of the staffing puzzle is the vest. Now the vest will launch on the same day as the sweater and the cardigan in January, but the sample will, the test will start in two weeks. So I, it'll still be like a nine and a half week test and it won't have sleeves. So I think that's still a reasonable timeline. But the main reason for that is that whilst I'm pretty confident putting together the numbers and the pattern for the cardigan, given that I've knit quite a lot of cardigans and the numbers and the gauge are all the same as this sample, um, I wasn't as confident with the vest and I wanted some time to be able to knit the vest sample uh, and be able to um, knit the vest sample and write the pattern up. So I'm jumping into whips, uh, which is a little bit, I still got another finished audit to show, but I'm gonna jump into whips so that I can show you this as well, just so you've got the full staff in the picture. This is the vest. Oh, it looks so good on camera. Um, it has not been blocked, so it's all looking a bit hunky, bumpy, lumpy all over the place. It will block out a lot. This pattern, obviously with ribbing, just chills out big time. Um, and so this is not done that yet, so it's all looking a bit lumpy, bumpy. Uh, I followed kind of like a drop shoulder construction for the vest, if that makes sense. So the shoulder doesn't come down as low, but it's constructed the same way as my Lauder vest, which has got kind of like a detail line across the back shoulder, and then you increase like a trapezoid, and then you work the shoulders. That is so that I can keep all the shaping in 2x2 two two rib, because 2x2 two two rib is really easy to do the shaping in, um, whereas the diamond brocade is probably less. I mean, it's only increasing either side, it's not too complicated, but it's a bit cleaner and a bit easier to do it in ribbing. So that's what the back looks like. Again, it's all bunched up, but it means you have these really fun little... Um, like diagonal bubbles on the shoulders, which I just think is so cute. It kind of like frames the back quite nicely. Um, the neck and the arms are finished with one by one rib. And I'm not using Fivo for this. I am using, I have a whole skein here. I'm using Filcolana, no, that's not true. Sandness Garn Pure Gint in the color matcha it's the new petite knit color it's the amy sweater that she made was in this yarn and i'm holding it together with a strand of filcal and atelier and the color meadow the shawl i should have said this at the time is knit in explorer knits and fibers big dill with filcal and meadow and um, i had a sweaters quantity of the meadow and i basically split my sweater quantity into a vest quantity and a shawl quantity and um, but i'm using two different base yarns and i think it's kind of interesting this is the base yarn for the shawl this is the base yarn for the vest. They're both obviously in the same like slightly green, but this is more green and this is more yellow. And then they've both got the same mohair and this is how the exact same stitch pattern at the exact same gauge has come out with the same mohair and a different base yarn. You can tell I'm having like a, a lime green moment. It's very cool. Uh, so yeah, good to know then also, I got gauge with one strand of fever. I also got gauge with, now this is quite a drapey fabric, but I like it, but it's it's not holy or anything, but it's definitely drapier with a very standard DK and a mohair. And then this is like a, a an iron or a worsted. I think this is 90 meters per 100 grams with a mohair. I think you probably could also get gauge with this solo, but I've not tried. Any gauge of yarn, like any yarn, I don't mind. Like I have people testing acrylic, have people in like warmer climates sometimes test in like cottons and linens when it's a pattern that's not designed for that. I think this would struggle in cotton because it's such a high gauge. Um, but any yarn you like is fine for the test net. There's no requirements in that whatsoever. So as you can tell, I've been having a bit of a staffing party over here. Uh, the vest I cast on on Monday, so it is flying. The shawl I've not touched as I cast on the vest because I to get the vest numbers finalised. The sweater is done and I'm not allowed to cast on the cardigan until goodness knows when. At least I've got another few weeks. I need to get the vest finished and then I'll get into the cardigan. I'm going to make the v-neck cardigan in that dark grey. I'm very excited for it. Uh, but yeah, I think that is everything 
on staffing. I feel a bit frazzled running into all of that, but I hope I've answered, I hope I've covered everything. And if not, everything about it will be in the test net form below. And the test net form also says, if you have any questions, just contact me. The test form is open now. It will close on Sunday or earlier if there are already too many applications. Uh, the test net will start on Monday and it will run until the first week of January. If uh, you are not interested in the sweater or the cardigan, but you are in the vest, I will do a separate test call in two weeks time for the vest once I'm all finished and the pattern is finalised and my two tech editors have checked all the numbers. <laughs> okay, let's um, let's stop and go into my other finished object. Very excitingly, I've got two two metre long shelves that are gonna go on the wall above me, the full length of the sofa, and they're gonna have all my samples on them. And that's what just got delivered. So I'm not sure what I have time to pick up today. It might be a next week job, but I am very excited. We're getting there. We're getting there with this room. So uh, part of the interruption, but my point was ultimately that I think by having multiple samples, people tell me, for example, that like they need to be knit for other people or like they want a basic and then they want a more interesting version. So that's why multiple versions work. But I think this is a very accurate, or like a very good example of how one base pattern with the same construction for the most part, like a v-neck or a round neck, a slight difference, but otherwise like the same base pattern can make this, which is all over texture, big shawl collar, to me more so than my mum would wear than what I would wear, but also make like a super cute cropped oversized drop sleeve shoulder sweater cardigan that I will definitely wear. And so it just provides more value to a pattern. And also it appeals to more people more people can see the pattern and see themselves in it. People who would wear this will also be the same people as people who see the other one. Anyway, let me um, jump into my, cause I've got so many samples. I've got like finished sample, working sample, same with the staffing. Um, I'll talk about this one and then we'll get into the rest of my regular works in progress and I'll put my staffing back on. I feel nervous wearing this cause I know it's gonna go to my mum. So I feel like I don't like wearing it in case I damage it cause it's not, I mean, it's my, it's, it's mine. Like I knit, all, I knit a lot myself and everything, but it's promised to my mum. So I feel nervous wearing it in case I ruin it. So, um, the plan was to only have one more sample, but I think I'm gonna have two more samples. And I probably shouldn't because I'm a little bit stressed about deadlines at the moment and I could just make my life easier by not making four samples of one sweater. Um, but alas, it's where we're at. So uh, the deal is I started, well, I started what was going to be my third sample. Now, my third sample is going to be crop length, texture joke, plain body, round neck. Um, and that's really the only sample I'm missing is like the half and half texture because I've got an all over texture and a plain one. My issue with a plain one is I'm wearing it so much that I'm worried it's not going to be good for pictures. Anyway, um, so I cast on my third sample. The problem being, this is basically the exact same colour as my original sample. I'll put a picture here. The sample is somewhere in this room, but I'm not gonna go find it. This is my original sweater version. This is basically the same thing. It's exact, almost the exact same colour. It's a bit richer and a bit like redder. It's blowing out a little bit. But this is the same thing. Is that my door going again? Will Sam get it this time? It's my groceries coming. I'm gonna keep talking, you'll get it. Um, so I cast this on, but I was sitting out, I had my sweater out, I had this out, and I was like, these are just the same thing. They're exactly the same sweater, what am I doing? Uh, so I put this on hold, ultimately, and decided to, cap to work on my final sample and come back to this when I've got an idea about what to do. If I'm being perfectly honest, what I really want Okay, so that was an exciting delivery. That is my shelving coming um, for above here. So I'm gonna have two, like this is a three seater sofa. There are gonna be two shelves the full length of this and all my sw my sweater samples are gonna be on the wall. Um, and out in, bright and out in bright and airy, which I think is gonna be good against any moth damage. Um, currently they're all tucked away in a wardrobe and I want them out so I can see them all. And it means that on like one side of me, I'm gonna be covered with, I'm gonna have swatches in front of me and I'm gonna have sweaters behind me. I am very excited. Also, if anyone comes to use this room as our guest room, which it technically is also our guest room, 
They're gonna be surrounded by yarn and sweaters and swatches. But I think our first guest is also a knitter, so it's okay. Um, but I was just saying, I think this sweater is like a perfect example of why multiple samples and multiple options work because I don't think, I love this, I love this. I think it's so cozy. I'm a little bit sad to give it to my mum. But I don't think I would see this pattern and be like, that is for me. Like, I don't think of myself as being like a shawl collar, longer length, like that's not really the vibe and doesn't really fit into my day-to-day -day wardrobe. But it does appeal to my mum. She will wear this to death. But the cropped version, drop shoulder, bright colour, that is going to be 100% my vibe. And so it means that I can appeal to different markets. It means that somebody could buy the sweater pattern and knit it for multiple different people in their life. Um, and I think that's the value add of adding multiple options is that you just, you appeal to more people. So we will see, but I will say, I was, I'm doing this so you can see the sleeves. I was not convinced that this sweater, I didn't think I'd finish the sample and be like, yep, that's why I, I want to keep it. I thought I'd be quite determined for my mum and I finished it and I don't want to take this off. I will take it off because I'm terrified I'm going to spill something on it and ruin it before I give it to her. But let me talk about my, my final sample, or no, that's not even true. Let's talk my next sample of the sixth season while I'm still wearing it and then I'll change back into the staffing. So, the thing I'm missing is my half yoke, like my yoke only texture. And I cast that one on, but I'm not convinced I want to stick with the colours that I chose. So the sample, the colours that I chose, well, the colour that I chose is I think called terracotta. And this is what it looks like. It's glorious. However, it is the exact same colour as my sweater version. It's a different gauge, but part of me is just thinking like, does, does, does it serve my wardrobe to have, I wear all my samples. Like I, I saw something yesterday about someone saying that, like a designer saying that they're gonna change. I think it was um, Jen from JP Knit. She posted a reel on Instagram saying, she's changing the way that she designs because usually she knits a sample and she never really wears them because they're like saved for trunk shows. And I didn't realize that's something we're meant to be doing. Are we meant to be keeping our samples good? I wear them to death. <laughs> I have a lot, so like I'm never too worried about, I don't know, I'm never too worried. I always have something good and I can always debubble something to wear it to a trunk show. To, you know, I've not really done that much. I've taken my samples to do different things ever. I wear them all the time. So the question is really like what fits into my wardrobe. And I'm not convinced that even though it's the chunkier gauge, and it is glorious and it looks really good on my hair. I'm not convinced that this will still have a purpose outside of the realm. Like, when would I choose to wear this instead of the sweater? Am I just making my life harder? And could I have more options if I knit this in a different colour? The answer I think is yes. The trouble is, is that the yarn that I want to use is sold out. But I need to keep wearing my samples for these because I, I would like to have them all ready for the photos. And so what I did is I've kind of jumped over this one I'm regularly checking back to see if the yarn comes back in stock and I've cast on my fourth sample. Now, I don't really need the fourth sample. However, this first sample I've worn so much and it's become like my dog walking morning sweater and I think it's already covered in sand and a bit scruffy and I'm worried it's not gonna be as good as it needs to be for the pictures. Also, I kinda wanted a bright pop of color in the pictures. So this I think I'm gonna do in, this is Vams again, the same yarn as this one, which I will definitely knit myself a sample in Vams because this yarn is beautiful. It's so, I'm so pleasantly warm right now. The house is not very warm at the minute. It's like three degrees outside today. Our house is maybe like 18 degrees inside. And this is, I'm like a glorious temperature right now. So I want a sweater in this yarn. I, I mean, this yarn I'll still use for another sweater. I might use it for my second staff and sample. Um, but not this colour because it's going to soon be the same as my car, my same as my sweater, but a little different. The green I want to use is called Green Melange, but it's sold out. So I will be refreshing the knit.co.uk website until they restock it. <laughs> so whilst I like jump skipped over that, this is actually, I've got the whole ball here. It just looks so good. Look at it. It's such a nice colour. Um, so I kind of jump skipped over this. It's still on the needle on the thing because I, if, if it gets to like four weeks away from the picture deadline and that yarn is still not in stock, I might still finish that one, like I'm undecided. But for now, it's staying where it is. I don't need the yarn right now, it's okay to stay on the, it's just on a, on a, what are they called? Stitch holder cord? Barber cord. Um. So in the meantime, I cast on another sweater, but of course I cast on from Stash. Cause, oh my God, I'm such a good knitter. I cast on from Stash. Ah! 
ah, every time I wear a color like this or bright orange, someone tells me it's my color. So this is, but I'm excited. So this is the plain version. And as you can see, like this is the same pattern as this, but it has the same, you can't really see when it's not blocked, the same sort of ribbing detail on the shoulder. Um, as the back panel. So I've just finished the back panel. Uh, so, so I'm so excited about this color. So I am using a yarn which I have not used in a while. I'm using Wooly Knit, Hell of a Strand of Philical Anatilia. So Wooly Knit, um, oh, I literally have a whole needle in that ball of yarn. <laughs> so Wooly Knit um, is a British company. They make a couple of different bases. They make a four ply British wool, four ply merino, and this is pretty much the, some of the first yarn I ever worked with. And two of my first ever sweaters I knit was one in Br British wool, and one in Merino. I then did a cone along with Wooly Knit, which is a collaboration. And I think Wooly Knit now is pretty well known in the Indian community. I think they're currently running their second promo with um, Inga of Knitting Traditions. I feel like all the podcasters have now done a collaboration with Wooly Knit. I think I might have been the first, not to toot my own horn a little bit. There was maybe one before me, but I was early on in the days of Wooly Knit collaboration. And since then, I've not really used much of the yarn. I've had it in stash. I've not really touched it. I've used it for a blanket whip that I have that I've not touched all year. Um, but otherwise, like, I've just been trying other yarns. And in my head, this is going to sound silly, but in my head, I kind of thought, like, I loved it so much when I was a beginner knitter. So, sorry, this yarn company has sent me free yarn in the past. The yarn I'm showing today, I have paid for. They have not sent me yarn in well over a year, I think probably two years, but certainly well over a year. Um, this I had in stash, I bought it at some point, it is the colour Corvette Blue and I have it in Hanks. And I think what I thought was that when I was a beginner knitter I was just in awe of 100% wool and I just loved it. Because at the time I'd maybe tried some acrylic before and like I tried different yarns but like, this is when I first got into the sort of knitting community. And I think I just thought like this is, I just love this. And then I'd go off and try other yarns and like this would become a middle of the pack for me. I cast this on and I remembered that I love this yarn. I really, really like it. Now I know they put the prices up in recent years. When I first started knitting with it, it was very, very cheap. It's still pretty cheap. It's become more expensive, but it's still pretty affordable compared to other things in the market for 100% wool. Um, and I know that their global shipping, their international shipping can be really pricey for some people, but for me it's not. So it's easy for me to get my hands on and it's affordable. It reminded me so much. I remember my first sweater I knit with this was a no-frill sweater from Petite Knit. And I just remember thinking, I remember being on a train, knitting the yoke and thinking that this just feels so nice. I'm in such a nice flow, I'm in such a nice rhythm. That is how I feel with this again. And I was surprised to feel that way. So yeah, back to something that's been in stash for a while. And it's really, really lovely. Um, it's definitely like, it's a much thinner fabric to this, like dramatically. So it's gonna be more of a cardigan vibe, but it is still two strands of wool and a strand of mohair. It's gonna be pretty cozy. Um, it's taking the mohair really nicely. I actually not got that, my rowing out is more obvious on camera. You can see it quite a lot here but it's not at all that visible in person. Um, and and yet, yeah, honestly, really like this yarn. And it's not that I'm pained to say it, like I have no issue saying that this is really nice yarn, but I was I surprised myself because I was really under the impression that my opinion would have changed or that the, the, the level of enjoyment that I experienced knitting this yarn before was because of my lack of experience knitting different yarns rather than this yarn was really great and in retrospect this yarn is really great so not a paid opinion they have I think they've never given me money but they have sent me a lot of yarn in the past but not for a long time and I hadn't really given up on them but they kind of just I kind of just checked out on them a little bit and I am not I still have a sweater quantity of this and a sweater quantity of this cinnamon color which is a, my other beautiful color it's such a nice color from them and I think I still have some hanks of the pure white, which is for the blank whip. I'm not going to go placing any more orders anytime soon, she says, dubiously. They do have a DK weight base now, which I've not tried yet, and I might get the DK weight base at some point. But all that to say, I'm impressed. And I probably shouldn't be, but I am. 
So yeah, that's the back. My plan is to get the fronts done this week and then be joining the round for next week, but we will see if I get there. Okay, let me change back into my staffing and take this off and talk about my, my final two whips. Here's I restocked, it's not really the word, but I was using a different wool wash. I was using a soak wool wash in the yuzu flavour, nothing flavour, scent. Nothing wrong with it, but um, my favourite is Euclid Jasmine. I love the smell of it so much, uh, but I told myself I couldn't buy any until I'd finished the one I have, otherwise I'd just never finished the one I had. I've now restocked in Jasmine and the sweater I just took off smells so, like, I sort of tossed it across the room to sit on the other side of the sofa and I just got this waft of the Jasmine and like a warm smell because I've been wearing it, it's like warm wool. Just knitter things, you know, like just the knitting things. <laughs> Okay, uh, I lied, I have three whips. I thought I only had two. Let's go to this one. It's, it's not really almost done. I feel like it's almost done. It's not. In my head, sleeves are just gonna fly and they're taking me like a whole week to finish one sleeve, but I think it's because I've been not really prioritizing it. So the next pattern I have coming out is coming out next week, a week today. <laughs> I'm not finished my second sample. Uh, that's a slightly terrifying thought, but it's fine. This will be finished. Today is Thursday. This will be finished by tomorrow. I've decided it will be finished by tomorrow end of day And then we are going away for a few days and I'm taking this with me and getting some pictures there and then I'm pr like pattern wise I'm pretty much already for the final the final pattern. So that's that's pretty good uh, This is the NYX sweater. This yarn was sent to me as a collaboration with the dyer who is Explorer Knits and Fibres I feel like in person this green is so vibrant and I feel like the camera usually pulls out the vibrancy more but the blue is just so bright, almost neon, that you don't get the vibrancy of the green on this camera in the same way you do in person and even on my phone camera. So this is uh, from, so this is Explorer Knits Earthy DK. This is a pattern collaboration with them. Stick Season, the sweater was the collaboration with them last year and this is NYX, NYX. Uh, it's inspired by Hosier Song, Son of Nyx, and um, it is a colourwork sweater. There are two colourwork options. There's an all-over colourwork and there's a yoke-only colourwork. I'll put a picture of the all-over colourwork one here. And this is this. This one is just... Ugh, I'm really excited to buy it. I will... I need to not cast on a third sample of this, but I really want to cast on a Christmas sample with cranberry red colourwork and cream body. Um, I have the yarn to do it as well. So I'm very, very close to finishing the first sleeve. I've just put onto my, I've just done my round in my smaller needles and then I'll do my cuff on DPNs. And then I need to power through sleeve number two. The base of this is, it's an earthy DK, which is a non super wash DK. The blue is blue spirulina and the green is big dill. They are from the Farmer's Market collect Collection, which went live fairly recently. I just think this is going to get so much wear. I'm so excited to wear this. I'm going to an event on, I'm going to a crafting workshop on Sunday. I'm going to make felted pumpkins. And I would love for this to be ready to wear to that. Like I think that would be such a fun way to wear this sweater for the first time. And yeah, I just want to finish by then. So I need to make some progress on it. It's a lovely yarn to knit. It's really nice. I will say it's not, it's fairly bobbly, but I've always find the bobbles just shave off. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, like I'll still get plenty of wear of the sweater. My stick season last year was made in it and I still get plenty of wear of it. I just, every sort of few months, I just give it a shave and get rid of the bobbles. Um, but yeah, I I really like the non, the, the single color work version more like the, the just the yoke only more than I thought I would. I thought that all over would be my absolute ride or die. I think I prefer just the yoke, um, but maybe that's just me. I did a double, there's not, I did a double folded neckband. The pattern is a single neckband. I just did a double folded one and there are short rows after the colour work which means that you get this very clean look all the way around the neck which I really like. The um, all over colour work has the short rows in the, in the ribbing at the neck. So close to being done. Not done yet, but today, 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 today. I say this, my plan is to finish filming I've got two units to build for, my desk is on trestles for Ikea and I've got a tabletop but I'm running, I need some more like office -y storage for things like notepads and pencils and all that stuff. So I'm replacing my trestles with uh, 
cupboard, one's a cupboard and one's a drawer set. So I have to build them, I've got shelves to put up. I've got to unpack everything onto those shelves. And I've got like an actual just general life to live today as well, like all the other things I have to do today. So I'm not sure if that's gonna happen today to get that finished, but I am determined at least to knit like half of the sleeve. And I can go there half tomorrow. Like 20 centimeters of sleeve two today would be the goal. But yeah, next comes out next week. Um, I will have a video. Um, I should have a video next week. It won't be a podcast episode, um, but there will be a discount code. I will make sure to share it here on YouTube and there will also be, it'll be over on Instagram if you miss out on, if you don't see it. If like, if you don't guys the video next week, definitely check it on Instagram. There will definitely be a discount code then. I usually try and line up my patterns so that the discount is coming out sorry the, the pattern is coming out on a podcast episode week but it just didn't happen today and I don't really know why um but I'll still have another video which is not a podcast episode okay my next whip is not very exciting um just because I've not made much progress and it's not in a very interesting state but this is my Cara wrap um I put a picture of the wrap here this is my second sample and um, the first one is a glorious red color that's what my that's what I might wear on Sunday if I don't get this finished on time um and this is where I'm at it looks so silly, I said this before, it's a set-in sleeve and so when I'm knitting a drop shoulder you have, where did that go? If I, like the drop shoulder, the, this is just the back and there's like so much fabric because it has to drop over the shoulder but the set-in sleeve, like there's just no fabric, like it's just a tiny little, teeny tiny little thing. Um, so I've joined uh, under the arm and now I just have to knit the body. The body is it's not crazy long but they're, it's a wrap so they're increasing the whole time so this body's going to take me a while and I, I've not really dropped the ball on it but my primary stockinette project has been my next so this needs some love. It will get some, we are heading to our boat tomorrow so the day the video is on we should be heading to the boat tomorrow um, which is like a hour 40 minute drive there and an hour 40 minute drive back and I will not be driving which means I get to be a passenger princess wrangle the puppy if he's being chaos in the back, which hopefully he will not be, and um, knit. So my plan, oh I've got my mohair so tangled around this year, just untangle it. So I'm hoping to get that done and then we have got a few days away next week. We're going to a cabin, cottage even, um, not far from Edinburgh, like an hour and a, like a two hour drive from Edinburgh, but fairly remote uh, with lots of like nice walks and stuff around and I'm taking a new project, a brand new whip which is not got a deadline and is not, like, I think it'll be maybe a design for next year, but it's not going to be a design for this year. So there's, it's just going to be a joyous knit with no ulterior motives. <laughs> but I think this will be my stockinette project because I need to make some progress on it. Otherwise, I'm going to be chasing, I, I'm still in a safe place with it, but I'm going to be chasing my tail if I'm not working on this pretty soon. So ideally, I'll get the body of this done next week. The sleeves of this did knit up quickly. My, my other one, the sleeves knit so fast. So I think the sleeves will go fast when I get there. Um, this is going to be the slightly longer ver version so they all have the same shaping to the waist and then you can either do a very little band of ribbing so it ends at the waist or you can do longer ribbing and this will have the longer ribbing this is knit up in uh, drops alpaca and filcolan atelia I'm a big fan of drops alpaca and this is so soft I'm very excited to have this I'm not excited to knit it just because it's back and forth stocking it forever um, but I'll get there I just I need, what I need is a good book to get into. I should find some good books to take on holiday next week. Because once I've got a good book, this flies. Like I can sit reading for like four hours on end and just knit a stockinette without caring. And then I look down and I've suddenly knit a bunch. Um, but it's not going that fast just without a distraction. <laughs> so what I need to do is I need to get all my ends woven in. There are a lot of loose ends and that just makes it always feel a bit scruffy. Um, so I'll get my ends woven in and then I will get going on the body of this and make some progress. The car up comes out in November. The testers are finishing up. They're the first few finished test knits of this week. So in my head, it's still coming out ages away, but in my head, November is ages away and in November is not ages away. So this will be fairly soon, um, which is exciting. And I have one final work in progress. And then I'll talk a little bit about my new cast on for next week. I thought the yarn would arrive. It's due to come today. Um, it's not here yet, but that's fine. So. My final whip is maybe my favourite one, but don't tell the rest of them I said that. This is a cardigan and it's also going to be a mega pattern. So it's going to have a cardigan and a sweater and 
a vest. I already wore my tech editor, um, but yeah, I probably should warn myself and I decided to do this. So, it's a cable knit and it has a lot of honeycomb cables. So let me show it and then we'll talk about it. So this is the sweater. It is a, a raglan. It has this very, this is a new to me raglan, like new to me method of increasing. I've not done this before. And it makes this very cool like statement raglan. It has a little bit of moss stitch. It has a little extra cable here, but for the most part, this is a honeycomb cable knit. It is knit up in a uh, Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland wool in the colourway Red Squirrel. And uh, nothing for all of Mo here, the colourway Rust, um, which is really, really a very lovely colour combination. I blocked the yoke because I had to make sure my math was right. And it's blocked and it's just, it's blowing out a little bit. It's a really, really rich, like caramel colour. And I am so excited to wear this. I just, it's one of those things you look at and you're like, did I make that? Like, did that come out of my hands? Um, which I'm very excited about. So I got a few comments when I shared this last time because if you've been watching for a while, you will know that I knit, I test knit a raglan cable knit sweater two years ago for Sarah Nordland. It was the Billy cardigan and I've given that away. Like I do not wear that and I didn't, I actually enjoyed knitting it, but I did not enjoy wearing it. And that, at the time, I gave, I put that all down to the fact that it was honeycomb cables because someone had commented and told me that they're also known as like the boa constrictor cable because they pull this way and they pull this way. And I also don't like the sleeves. The sleeves, I think this is just a Sarah Norland feature and I think a lot of people love it, but for me, I don't like it. They're, they're quite, her, her cuffs are quite roomy. Um, if I looked at the pattern with the skill I have now, I would have just done some rapid decreases before the cuff. Even just like, I'd have taken out like I don't know, like six stitches or something, four stitches, six stitches. I just didn't know it was a thing at the time and it bothered me. But the main thing was that it was so tight on the body and it made me queasy. Like it was so tight across the chest. So I think that the fundamental problem there was not the honeycomb cables. I think the problem was that when I was gauge swatching, I was really stretching the cable out, like fully stretching it. And I was getting gauge. But I would be interested to know that if I stopped and I don't have the sweater, my mum has a sweater now, if I stopped and measured that sweater, would I have the final pattern gauge that it's meant to have or would it be under gauge? I think the sweater's just too small, just too tight. I think what it is is that I stretch the cables more, like when you block a cable it really flattens out, but I think I really like sh 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 stretched it, whereas I think what I needed to have done is just go up the other size and make, and then the cables aren't pulling they're just quite stagnant and that's what I have here like these cables are not taut these cables are just flat like I've not stretched anything I just put work them flat um so I'm gonna have a good bit of ease on this sweater this is also the cardigan the, the sweater version I'll go up a size and the cardigan version will be a smaller size than my sweater I want my sweater to be like big and chunky and oversized um and the vest as well I did this watch for my vest I've chosen my yarn my vest will be the next thing I cast on and then I'll probably knit the sweater along with the test knit. I love this little like little bait braid cable at the front and it is going, it is a lot of honeycomb but I'm really really enjoying it and it's forcing me to slow down and it's a very like methodical is not really the word but it's the same kind of feeling as methodical when you're just kind of like it's just going and I don't mind like I don't quite like cables yeah, like it's, I've done significantly more labour intensive work than this. <laughs> I also cable without a cable needle, which I think helps, but that is probably currently my current favourite whip. Um, the pattern will not come out until February. Like that is my February pattern. So I will need to get this finished up in the next like three weeks, this one and the vest. But I have like other priorities right now, so it's not taking priority, which is fine, but I'm just itching to get back to it. I feel like this is the sort of project that if I'm just sitting and doing, like if I just tell myself that every single day I'm going to knit four rows, four rows is one cable, that's basically a centimetre. It'll be done in like 10 more days if I do just do that, but I just don't have the time to, like right now I've got other things and I'm forcing myself to put this down and not work on it so that I put the time into the other things that I want. 
Um, cool. So I've got to talk about Project One on my way, but I also thought I'd talk about something interesting that I shared on YouTube earlier, uh, on YouTube, on Instagram earlier this week, and it could be fun to show. Um, let me just collect the bits. So if you have been watching for a while, pre Cargill, you'll know that I had another design on my needles for a while, and then it kind of got abandoned for Cargill, and it didn't really come back to it. But I decided it's going to come back in 2025. In the spring, every year for the last two years, I mean, I say every year, like it's a thing, I've done it twice, but I had the Santa cardigan, which is a lace cardigan for spring. Before that, I had the Corin cardigan, which is a lace cardigan for spring. This is my lace cardigan for spring this year. And it's a pattern that I started three years ago. <laughs> this is the Kathy Cardi. And I, was, I have most of a, I have almost, I mean, not almost a finished sweater, but I've got a fair amount of progress on the sweater. This sweater will not, like, it's going to be changed different construction um, and I've tried this on since and there are some sick, pretty hefty changes I would make to it but I'm kind of impressed that for my first cardigan like it looks as good as it did um, even though like I would change stuff now it's not that bad this is the Kathy Cardi it is very cropped which is something I would change it has a double knit button band somehow and I don't know what I was planning to do with the neck band like I've done this much what was I planning to do with all of this I don't really know um, but it is this really, really lovely stitch pattern of cables and lace. I've got the swatch as well, so this is what it looks like. And this, I'm going to bring this back. So it's going to be a while. I've got one more pattern in between. So it's like an April pattern. So I've got a March pattern, which is also going to be a cardigan. And then this, um, which is probably good because with my honeycomb cables, this will give me a little break between... It won't be cables back to back. It'll be something in the middle and I think I'll probably make this a slightly bigger gauge this is a this is like a 24 stitch gauge which is a little bit light for my I don't know maybe I'll maybe I'll do stick with this but it's a lot of cabling if it's that's the space I might walk a little bit um and I'm gonna do I think a saddle shoulder which I've not done yet and I'm gonna make it in lilac I'm just so excited about all these things and I just thought there are probably people here who have been watching long enough to remember when this was the first this was my first pattern that was gonna come out um, or maybe it was my second, I don't really remember where it came in the timeline but some people must definitely remember this cardigan and I get asked about it like every few months someone drop me a message and say do you remember this Kathy cardigan? like what are you doing about it? so I thought I'd just do a little update for anyone that's interested so yeah I had the body of a cardigan and a sleeve um, but I also thought this would make a very very cute like short sleeve almost like a, almost like a blouse um, and again I like to do that lace cardigan in the spring I like to do it as, a, as, a, as two options so this is making me want to make it drop shoulder again, but I think I'll do a saddle shoulder uh, and we'll see. But yeah, I thought I'd show that. Just something a bit random. I still got this whole whip. It's still in here. It's on, I even have, do I have needles attached? Sounds like it. Maybe not. It was on Knit Pros, which is a sign. Like I've been using Chagu for a year plus now. So it showed you the last time it was touched is like the, the wire that was on, the cord that was on it was a, was a Knit Pro cord. Um, and it's just tucked in my whip. I've got a couple of whips that I'm not really sure what I'm doing with them. I think everything that's in there I'm probably keeping, either keeping the yarn or keeping the pattern. Um, but I hung this back up on my board and I've been thinking for a while it should make it come back and then like I officially put it on my, I've got a planner, although my pattern is coming, and I officially put it on my planner and uh, it's making it come back. So if anyone asked about it in the past, that is what's happening. Um, and then my new cast on, my like holiday cast on next week, I'm going to just really try to take the pressure off and not give myself any deadlines and just knit it as I want. But it's going to be a colourwork yoke. I'm going to use five colours. So four colours in the yoke with a main colour. But I calculated it so that it could use 24 colours. So it could be used for an advent. So my plan is really, like I don't think, I'll, there's, it's just not unreasonable. And I keep, I see this now, like I'm seeing some designers now, like panic, panic deadline stuff. Like knit just a yoke and then put out a test call and the test call is like until the end of October or something like it's I'm just not being that person like I I don't need to rush to get a pattern out I've got a lot of patterns coming I've got plenty on my plate I'm not going to try and squeeze the advent pattern out before the end of the year um but maybe it's the next year advent or maybe it'll come out like later in the year I, I my, my goal is that it would work for it could work for four colors it could work for five colors or six colors or basically whatever number of colors you want but it would work for up to 24 colors my plan is to knit the four colour one myself, mostly because 
I don't have an advent to use right now. I've got one that I started last year, but I don't think it's going to give me the colour contrast I want. Um, and also, I don't know if the widest stripe on the yoke, I need to know the yardages for that widest stripe to be able to calculate whether or not I would fit a whole, like a whole advent. My current thought is I will probably do a sweater in four ply and in DK, because I like that in DK, but advents generally are in four ply. Some people like to lit in four ply. Um, and they might have a short sleeve version but like that's as far as I've gotten with this planning I mean no I've written the whole ch chart out and sw I've not swatched it yet ordered the yarn made the chart done the maths <laughs> but I'm going to cast it on while I'm away um, and see how I get on with it and there are definitely some things like the yoke is quite long um, in the f in, so I'm going to have to split the colour work like I'm going to have to do the sleeve split in the colour work which is completely fine to do but like a few things are going to it's quite simple if you finish the colour work you do your short rows then you split for sleeves I'm not going to be able to do that I'm going to have to do the colour work split for sleeves then do the short rows so there are a few things I'm going to have to just like be wary of um, and the yardage is the big one but I think I ordered like six colours um, I'm only going to use four so I'm going to decide which four they're going to be and I'm going to take them on holiday next week and just have like a real dopamine cast on just for fun um, no pressure deadline like the earliest a sweater would come out is like next year I think so if anything I'm making my future life easier and maybe it's a bit silly of me to talk about I know that a lot of designers keep things under wraps because they don't want to like someone else could someone else could take this idea and run with it and have it out this year they could definitely do that but um, I'm hoping that's not going to happen and I'm just going to share it because I'm super excited for it and I'll will hopefully be a whip next time because I'll cast it on yeah, when I was knitting the Knicks, uh, there's a section at the top which is one by one colour work and it's so fun to knit. So I wanted to keep that vibe of like, the, the, the not the speed, but like the flow of one by one because I really, really enjoy working one by one colour work and I really wanted to cast on one. And it's funny because I had this idea of like, oh, I want to do one by one colour work at some point in the future and then I had this idea about 24 colours and then it all kind of like, whoosh, crashed into one. And I think that's how it happens with designing. Like quite often I'll have like a like some design concepts or some bits of pieces that I like and then I'll have something else and then it all kind of like converges as one thing. Yeah, my only other thing there was solid colour advent calendars. Who is a good person? I, I, I don't have an issue with loads of speckles and stuff but it's not really my vibe. Um, But you don't really get commercial. My other option is that I'm going to end up ordering 24 skeins of Phil Clara Peruvian Highland Wool. Which honestly is not that crazy to do. It would be like £98. And honestly, is that right? It's £4 a ball, 24 colours, plus the body of the yarn. Probably still cheaper than a hand dye. Obviously it's cheaper, it's commercial, but like it's... I'd have loads of scraps, but I don't know, put this in a blanket or something. Like it wouldn't be unreasonable for me to do that. I just don't know if there are 24 colours that I like. Um, so that is my alternative. But if anyone knows of an advent calendar, because my plan is to look for a couple of advents and then see if anyone puts up seconds. You know how they dye them all and then some come up in like November? Because I don't really need to arrive for December 1st, that's not like my... Although if I test the yoke out and it works, it would be fun to knit one in December. And it's just like two stripes a day, so that'd be really easy. Anyway. That's my planning. So a little personal update, what's going on? Yeah, we've, we're doing pretty well housewise. So both Sam and I have time off in October, which is really nice. We're off together. Um, we've got a little holiday trip planned next week. We're going away for f Monday to Thursday, I think. Um, but other than that, we're just using this time to get some house stuff done. We've got some other things, like the boat will have to come out of the water uh, before we go back in November. And the hope is that most of the house stuff is done. We're not really going to have time to do more big house jobs until probably next year so we want to get our living room done, we want to get the two offices done and we want to get the boat out of the water so mostly it's house jobs but we're trying to enjoy it with like going out for some fun daytime dog walks because it's like a random Tuesday so we can just take the dog somewhere fun and next week we're going on a little holiday and I'm really excited I'm going to put my out of office on on my passion support email and I'm going to take some projects and just really try to do that. Other than that what's going on I'm currently attempting to post a reel a day on Instagram which is a kind of a fun experiment to see how much my engagement improves if I'm posting reels and so far it's going really well but it does mean I'm making a lot of videos so my brain is a little bit fried from video making which is not the end of the world um, so that's been my current like focus I guess and 
it's getting really cold here. It's currently, it was three degrees in the dog walk this morning. Um, it's definitely chilly, so I am firmly in knitwear weather. But yeah, I think that's about it. Do I have much more to update on? I don't think so. I've got lots of ideas, as you have heard. And I've got lots of whips, and I'm just trying to turn through them. I have, I like to have four whips at a time, and as you can see, I currently have more than four whips. And I'm going to cast one on next week, so I'm not making life easier for myself. But um, my goal is to get my next finish this week, and hopefully my staffing vest finished before we go away. I might just leave that blocking whilst we're away. And that would mean that I'm down to three whips, so I can cast on my new one. So that is the goal. And I think once I got those two things off my next stand and my staff invest done, I'll feel a little bit less overwhelmed with the number of products I have. Do you have a magic number for a number of whips? Like four is my number. Some people just have one, some people just have two. Some people just don't care and have loads, but yeah, four is my number. So yeah, I will be back next week with a different video. I think probably like a knitting essentials. So some of my favorite tools, things that I couldn't live without and then things that I definitely can live without and I think are overhyped. Um, so I'll be back with that next week and until then I'll be knitting away on all of my mini whips and as you can see I have a pile of them to get through and until then happy knitting bye